Now, my friend Mike pointed to this site uh, that had a very janky scroll, and I wanted to show a little bit of what that means and how we can fix it. First up, the term jank, if you're unfamiliar with it, um, think about it as the opposite of smoothness. It's often the visual jitter that you get when something is not operating as smoothly and nicely as you expect. A good way to train your eye to recognize jank is to play this game called Jank Invaders, put together by Jake Archibald. So up on the top are the good guys, they move very smoothly on the bottom. These are the bad guys, and they have jank when they move. Um, and so you can start up the game and play and like train your eye and find the guys like this guy. Oh, I missed. <laughs> um, and once you start noticing jank, um, you, uh, you notice it all over the place. So <clears throat> this is a site that Mike was talking about, the Canadian National Exhibition. So I'm just going to scroll on my trackpad here. And as I scroll down, you can see there's a few things happening. Um, but honestly, the frame rate is just really kind of rough. Um, now, I took a look at this and tried to make some fixes. And so this is what it is after my fixes. And um, it's it feels a lot better, uh, I'll tell you that. But let me see if I can try and visualize the difference here. I'm going to open up the DevTools timeline, and I'm just going to take a recording and scroll up and down. All right, and now we'll move over to the one uh, where I made some adjustments. And all right, so you can see it's toggling back and forth. Um, uh, on the before, uh, what we have, we have a lot of activity going on, and we're busting above my target, um, my target frame budget of um, even 30 FPS. A lot of the frames are, are slower than 30 FPS. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in each and every frame, whereas over in the second one, uh, we're not doing much and we're hitting 60 FPS pretty, pretty reliably. So how did I get there? Let's just walk through uh, all of it. So <clears throat> the first thing to notice is what is happening in every frame, and you can see a lot of purple, and the purple here is recalculate style. So <clears throat> if, we recalc if we hover over this bar, we can see the actual call stack on what happened. And there's a bunch of jQuery, but we're looking for our own user code that, that trigger all this off. So we click into uh, the cne.js, and we can see right here, this is the problem. So <clears throat> what we have is on every scroll event, we do these changes. And uh, what we're looking at is uh, we take some measurements, and then we are, do a toggle class. And what happens in this case is that we're toggling a class on the HTML element. And what the browser does is it says, oh, the, uh, the, class, the class name on the DOM element just changed. Um, I'm probably going to have to recalculate uh, the styles for the entire page now, because um, if that changed, then I got to check the rest of the styles. Um, and so fixed header and fixed background are changing. So let's have to recalculate everything. So that's what's happening. Um, and that's not great. Now, <clears throat> the quick jQuery-ish fix on this would be to check these conditions and see if they change. And if they change, then call toggle class, rather than just force the toggle class call every single time. Um, I'm going to use a different little fix. So I'm just going to do a live edit right here. And we'll grab the element itself and just do classless.toggle. And classless.toggle, you know, it's just part of the DOM. And it works actually the exact same way as toggle class. So I'm just going to hit Command S. And now this change is patched to V8. It's live. And I don't have to refresh the page. I'm going to come over to Timeline and start a new timeline. And I'm just going to hit Command D for that. And then I'll scroll the page. All right, cool. Now you notice there is still activity, but there's not much purple. Um, and that is, I'm not invalidating all my styles. Um, by making those toggle class changes. But I do still have a lot of green going on, and green is painting. So we can look and see that the paint is um, pretty big, and it's actually, um, in many cases, it's, it's the full screen. Um, but it tells us that the layer root is the document. So it's a, it's a big paint, and we want to find out um, what's going on here. So one thing that I can do is I can go over and I can turn on show paint rectangles and kind of scroll around and I can see these red rectangles. And one of the things you'll notice is this red rectangle is hanging out near the top, near this header that's uh, saying fixed. Fixed elements often have challenges when it comes to causing a lot of extra paints. There's a few ways to address this. So I'm going to try one thing. Uh, let's turn off those paint recs for the moment. And I'm going to come back here. And so it looks like 
um, this header element, as I scroll it, it toggles its position up and down, and it's actually just um, going to top negative 106 pixels. I'm going to change this effect, and we're going to use a transform instead. And while I'm at it, I'm going to just make sure that the layer stays promoted. Um, and we will add the same null transform down here. There's a lot that you can read about null transforms, and I encourage you to do that. Um, we won't have to do it all the time with fixed position, but for now, it is something that we will need to do. The last thing we have is CSS transition that, trans that transitions the top. And uh, because we just changed that, we will make sure that it translates the transform instead. Now I get, as I scroll, I still get that same header transition. But let's see what we look like in timeline. All right, cool. So there's still some green going on. Um, let's see if we can figure out what is what is up. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> um, ah, OK. So one of the things that is going on is we have this image in the background. And uh, you can see that it stays fixed position right now, um, whereas here it scrolls with the content. So it's a little interesting. Um, now, if I try and select this image, what actually happens is the images are here um, inside of some divs. And this is not ideal. In fact, browsers can do a lot to optimize uh, background images when they're applied to the body. And so when you apply it to kind of a subtree, but it acts as if it's kind of a body background image, that's not ideal. So if you have a background, set it on the body. So I'm going to kind of force this for now. Uh, and because I don't actually know how this is working, I'm just going to break on uh, subtree modifications, and hopefully this works out. All right, cool. Uh, so what I'm doing is breaking on this DOM change, and I'm just going to walk back. OK, cool. So here is um, where that subtree was changing. It looks like we're taking this image. We're prepending it into that page backgrounds div. Um, and I don't want to do this. Um, so first, I'm just going to turn off this breakpoint, let this continue to play, and I'm going to make some changes. So I don't want to do any of this. Instead, I'm going to kind of take this code, but I'm going to apply these backgrounds to the bo um, to the body. Uh, command slash to comment out this stuff, and I'll just reorient that. Maybe I should just get rid of it. Seems a bit cleaner. <clears throat> OK, uh, I want to grab the source of this image. I will still let it kind of move it around just because I don't know how to adjust that. Grab the source of the new image and body document.body.style.background image equals URL plus circ plus yes and good, I hope. Command S. This should work. Let's take a look over on elements, body. All right, cool. We just rotate the image, and uh, luckily my JavaScript worked. We set a new body style up here. I'm going to come down to uh, this old backgrounds guy, and I'm just going to hide this. Make that go away. We don't need that guy to show up anymore. So now, luckily, we have our image rotation changing the body's background. Cool, it just changed again. <coughs> and. Um, and so that's good. And if I do a new timeline recording, ah, yeah, this is looking much better. <clears throat> so that is kind of the adjustments that I made. Um, we were able to get this functioning much better and much smoother without the jank that um, Mike was complaining about. And just to make sure that I'm not saying something that's Chrome specific, I went and I took these optimizations and I applied them over in Firefox too. So um, here is the same page live as it is um, on their site. And I turned on this little debug flag for Firefox that outputs the frame rate. It's a little hard to keep track of, but um, you can see as I scroll kind of up and down the page, we're looking at numbers around 21, 32-ish, 38, 32, 26. And over here is my adjusted one. 
I'm just going to refresh this. And all right, nice. Uh, we have a fixed background, and we're looking at frame rates of about 30, 45. I see some 50s. Um, overall, quite a bit of improvement. So these changes worked out nicely cross-browser and uh, led to a jank-free site. I hope that helped.